Hello everyone, this is Flammy, and we are back with an interview with Jorge Yao. We are here with part 7 of my interview series with Jorge. We've been doing these over the last few months where we've talked about various strategies and other shenanigans. So if you missed out on the other ones, you should go check them out. For example, the most commonly asked question is in number 1, where we talk everything about gems and money and Clash of Clans. We also talked about a lot of strategy stuff, such as in part 2, and answering questions and uh, stuff that you guys have submitted in part 4. Uh, there's six of them, and you can see what they're all about if you go read the descriptions of this video, as well as go read their titles in their playlist. So I do have a playlist dedicated to Jorge. So, Jorge, we are back once again with another interview. How are you doing? Great. How, how are you doing, Flammy? I'm doing really good. So, just recently, in this last week, we had the April update, which had some new stuff. So this was the League update, which had new, a new Dark Elixir unit and some other changes. Yes, very exciting uh, update and a lot of changes. Yeah, and uh, from the sound of things, it looks like it's going to change a lot about the high-level strategy and tactics. Is that right? Yeah, it changed, uh, basically changed the entire way that I attack now. Wow, and not just you, but other players as well, I imagine, the sort of optimal strategy has changed? Yeah, a lot of... <laughs> I, I can guess that a lot of clans scrambled right when the update came out to, to figure out what the best strategy was. All right, so we're going to talk about that in full detail, but this update is, this video is going to cover the update in the in, in, in all of its aspects. So we've got the league system, we've got the new dark elixir unit, the golem. We have various changes to buildings, such as the new air defense, as well as the Teslas and the new air mine, and we have uh, some clan changes as well as a couple smaller things which we might or might not get around to. So let's talk, start at the top with the league system. So the league system creates a new uh, sort of ranking category system for all players from lowest new players who start at 400 trophies all the way up to the top. So what league are you in, Jorge? The Champion League. Yeah. And that is 31, 3200 trophies above? 3200 trophies and above. Nice. So that's actually pretty exclusive. So I noticed that about, that all of the top 200 are currently in that. Uh, but so that means probably there's less than 300 or so players in it. You think that's about right? Yeah, yeah, it might be a little bit more, give or take, but yeah, ballpark. Well, only right. top 300 in that, which is pretty interesting right there. Um, I guess you might be able to tell by just looking at your own league. So what it does do is takes em emphasis off global leaderboards for all of us normal players, I guess not so much as you. Uh, but for us, it takes emphasis off our global rank and changes it to be a league rank. So it puts you with 100 other players, or I guess 99 other players, who are in your current league bracket, and you can sort of compete against them and uh, try to pass them to get number one in your league, as well as progress into the next league. So you are currently number one player still. We've had some shenanigans lately where you lost it briefly, especially for one particular day where I believe it traded back and forth a lot. But have you been uh, in the number one lead for a while once again? Yes, I have. Since uh, that one day, I've been I've been holding on to the lead. And nice. That that one day, that that was when you finally someone caught up, and then you once again rocketed the head. Uh, have you uh, you've maintained it for a while now? What what trophy count are you at? Um, I'm currently at forty one sixty three, I believe. All right, so right above forty one hundred. So uh, nearly a thousand above the minimum required to get into the Champions League and in the lead by a solid chunk from uh, when I last checked. Yeah. Alright, so the loot system does introduce two things. So, the loot system is somewhat interesting in that it gives you free loot whenever you one-star someone. And this loot doesn't come from the players themselves, but Supercell awards it from their own generous pockets to anyone who gets a one-star. So, what do you think about this sort of change in rewarding players for their wins? I think it's cool. I think it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Um, the amounts could be adjusted a little bit, uh, from my perspective. The the amounts that are given to the top level players are are great, but you know not so much noticeable. But um, since we we don't really focus on resources as much as we do trophies, but I think for the lower level players, I think the the bonus is um, is an extra it's an added bonus. <laughs> Interesting indeed. So. I agree, for sure. I think that the loots are a little low. So um, both of my accounts are currently around 1,200, 1,300 trophies, which puts them at the top of the Silver League. Uh, so I know on one of my accounts, my uh, lower-level account, which is just 
getting up to Town Hall 8. I started the upgrade today. The loots are 3,500 elixir and 3,500 gold whenever I get a one, at least a one-star victory. Mm-hmm. Um, and that doesn't increase if I get more than one star. And that's not very much. For example, my video where, which will be coming out very soon, where I attack and just to get my fir- get, get my first league uh, win to place me in a league, I steal over 200,000 gold. And then it awards me, ooh, a grand total of 7,000 extra resources. Uh, that, that balance is a little off right there for me. Right. I think that uh, a unique, I guess, change would be maybe making it proportionate to how much you actually steal in the battle. So that would be kind of interesting to have it actually based off of uh, like a ratio of, you know, or a percentage of how much you actually steal per, for that battle. That's an interesting idea. Um, perhaps like have a minimum attached or something. Right. And then, yeah, and then just base it off a percentage. So, you know, more incentive to, to steal more resources. I think that would also, though, encourage people to uh, go down the trophy so they can get better loot or find the optimal trophy position to get lots of loot. So I'm Double not sure that I think that would be the best idea, but perhaps right. if it was like, if you're in the bottom like a lot you'll only get like one percent bonus and if you get a little higher you're like four percent bonus and you get a little higher maybe you're up to ten percent bonus if you're at the top i don't know right. but uh yeah interesting perhaps they could do some little changes i think the static change might be better but uh either way if it increases it would probably have a bit bigger significance in the game but it definitely is something for players to target for when they get to higher trophies now you mentioned briefly that this doesn't really change that much for you can you expand on that so the the resources that you get per battle, we we don't really focus on the elixir storages or the gold storages or the dark elixir storages. Um, we're just looking for the amount of trophies that are available per battle. So when we're when we're attacking a base, it's beneficial to you know to get the resources that you want to get, um, but it's more important to actually get the trophies. So we don't really pay attention to the resources as much. As much. And in terms of the bonus itself. Does it provide a significant boost? I'd expect it's sort of on the low end for you as well, like you sort of mentioned. Um, it's actually a pretty significant boost, uh, I'm not going to lie. It's 100,000 of elixir, 100,000 of gold, and I believe, I forget how much it was for dark elixir, I can just okay. check it once. 600, 800? 600, 600. yeah, okay. 600 is the, uh, the amount for dark elixir, so um, it's a pretty significant amount. I think on average, what I've seen on most battles, if I would to take out all the elixir storages and gold storages, I think you roughly get around 200 to 300,000 um, of each resource, so, and then I think 2,000 is the cap for Dark Elixir. So it's a sizable chunk, but it's almost reaching, you know, 50%, between 40 and 50% of what you would normally take, so. 2,000 is the cap indeed for Dark Elixir, however it is important to note that there is a boost awarded if you are attacking someone who has a higher town level than you. Obviously yeah. not very relevant for your situation, but uh, for the rest of us. But yes, 2,000 is capped without the boost, or when you're attacking someone with your own town hall level. Right. Now, um, that that gold that you're stealing, that, that seems pretty significant. Does that mean you generally aren't spending tons and tons of gems on resources to buy your units? You're mostly spending gems to speed up your units building? Um, both, actually. I mean, you we fill up our elixir storages, generally speaking, with gems, um, just, just so that we can attack quicker so it's anything to really just attack quicker um so speeding up the units um filling up the elixir storage is gold not as much uh it we use it more so for like walls and things but um other than that it's not really used spell i mean it's used for spells too but spells are relatively cheaper than than uh gemming the the actual units for the for the army camp so indeed and spells i believe they both became at least quicker did they also become cheaper in this last uh, update yeah, so making them quicker to, to produce will uh, inherently in- decrease the amount of gems it takes for them to, to speed up, so um, it, they, they did decrease a little bit. Huh, one benefit right there. Now, one thing that I noticed which is very sort of interesting was the league system and the way its sort of divisions work out uh, is very related to the way StarCraft II, uh, another video game on its own hmm. computer, does their league systems as well. So they as well have a, they call it a Grand Masters League, where they have uh, the top 200 players in the world that are ranked. But then for everyone below Grand Masters, in the Masters League and below, there's a, a bracket of 100 players, and they sort of sort you. 
into that with uh, your other players. So this is sort of replacing sort of a, a global leaderboard rank like we were talking about before. I thought it was sort of interesting they based it off that system, and I, I think it allows uh, good ways that you can sort of compete against other players, so you can look at your uh, or, uh, look at your uh, trophy bracket and be like, oh, this person is 17 trophies higher than me. If I pass them, I'll become number one in my league. And if I get another 30 after that, then I can advance to the next league above that. Which is a pretty cool way to look at it, if you ask me. Yeah, it's a definitely angle for sure to, to look at the leaderboard. So, and it's, it's definitely a, a motivator for a lot of people to, to want to, you know, pass the person right above you. And the, the beauty is it resets every two weeks and you have a completely new um, randomized list or, you know, of people in your league. So, you constantly have, you know, new competition, new goals to set every other, yeah, every two weeks or so. So, and of course, that's, that's a good point to point out that it, upgrade, it uh, uh, resets every two weeks. And of course, it also will update uh, when someone progresses out either high or low into the next league. That's either one above or one below. Right. Now, moving on to some strategy stuff. So, the Golem, the new Dark Elixir unit. Let's talk about that for a minute. So, this guy, what did you call him before? A punching bag? Yeah, he's a, he's straight up punching bag he very very low damage virtually none <laughs> it's negligible but just a straight up punching bag will take hits and hits and hits and hits <laughs> and yeah i'm not really surprised by this because it is if you look at its stats at all it does nearly no damage it's damage completely negligible if you look at its health oh my god it yeah. does a ton <laughs> oh <laughs> there's no god. other way to put it it is such a beast it is at level awesome. one it takes a uh, 450 dark elixir and has 4,500 hit points. Oh my god! Yeah. And then does 38 damage. Of course, it does have a 30 housing supply cost and 45 minutes of train with a movement speed of 12. Right. Ground only, single target, and favorite target is defenses. So, how do you use this unit, Jorge? It's very similar to giants, I would say, but just beefed up. They're I, I like to call them the, the dark version of giants because they like giants attack defense unit uh buildings so and i believe their movement speed is the, the exact same i think it's 12 um Indeed they are both are 12 right um the only difference is the clearly the housing space it takes it's six giants uh, equivalent to one golem however the golem it's interesting because it's not really affected by splash damage or anything like that um the giants you know you have six giants and you can do splash damage to, to all six if they're grouped together, so that's an interesting to, thing to... And in terms of the six giants, they are pretty equal in terms of health when you compare them to six giants, but the splash damage is going to be the huge factor there, because one mortar uh, doing attacking one golem is only going to do like 10 or 12 damage, whatever its maximum is, but if it attacks six giants at the same time, that's six times whatever its maximum damage is, so clearly a pretty big difference there. Right. Very, very clear difference. Now, in terms of strategy and stuff, uh, you said you're using golems now, so let's talk about some other strategy stuff that's tied into that. So, we've got a couple new things. We've got a new air defense, which came out just after the update in sort of a hot fix. Uh, we have a new level Tesla, which came out in the update, and we have a new air mine, which also came out in the update. So, all these things seem to be uh, boosting up defenses, but how do they change what you attack with? Yeah, um, so there's actually uh, another building that um, was mentioned is the Wizard Tower, the new Wizard Tower that's out too, as well, the that's fourth right. one, I believe. I about that. Yeah, uh, it's not, the the air defense, I would say, is the most significant for my my own gameplay, because I was strictly a Dragon player for, for a long, long time. Um, I actually started as P.E.K.K.A., I, I think I mentioned that previously, but since I can remember, I, I've been playing with drags, so... This has been a significant change. I, I was actually ex expecting the, the new, the fourth air defense to be included as part of the actual update, but um, but I wasn't surprised when they rolled out the uh, the hotfix, you know, a day or you know, a couple of days afterwards. So um, that was the biggest change. I, I'm no longer using drags anymore. And if you look at my army camps, they're filled with a combination of P.E.K.K.A.s, wizards, golems, wall breakers. Um, so I'm, I'm using ground units now. Very nice. So that is definitely a big change for you in terms of strategy and tactics and how you're attacking. Uh, how many other of the top players are switching over to either use Golem specifically or use, go back to just a, a very P.E.K.K.A. heavy or some combination thereof, just switching off dragons? We had talked before about how dragons were pretty much the 
go-to unit for everyone at the top, and that was right before the update came out. So has that switched? Yeah, it has switched. So if you know, if you look at top player accounts now and their bases, um, a lot have switched to back back to Pekka attacks. Now, previously, the, those players may have already been Pekka players and and just switched to drags because uh, they may have been easier and cheaper to to use. But um, so for those players, it, it might actually be an easier. Uh, switch or adjustment for them to switch back to Pekka's, but if you're generally speaking a, a, a dragon player for, for most of the game, then it's a huge adjustment for you and you know you can expect a lot of hurdles to, to overcome. Yeah, and we did talk about how you used to be a Pekka player, and that was months ago, correct? Correct, that was probably, yeah, a lot of, many months ago. <laughs> so probably at least December, uh, which is yeah. when we first talked, so it would have been before that when you had switched over. So yeah, a while. Yeah, a while. <laughs> so you said that the new air defense level is the most significant change in terms of motivating you to change over. Um, as well as, I mean, the air mine certainly doesn't help the dragons in their fight to attack. Um, Teslas, however, their new Tesla level 7 does do its bonus damage against Pekos, so that is interesting to hear. Do you think that that's very significant, however, in compensating? Um, not not in terms of what I've seen in uh, attacking bases, uh, just practicing around, so it hasn't been really noticeable. Um, I think if you use it, you use a correct strategy, I don't think you notice it as much as if, you know, if you're just new to using P.E.K.K.A.s and you're just going in. The Golem is a huge, huge, huge advantage because it basically takes on the damage while um, you know, your other units are able to skate through unharmed and, and do most of the, the hit point damage um, to the buildings while, you know, while the golems are basically punching bags. So I think I noticed earlier that you only had two P.E.K.K.A.s in your army uh, with, I think it was four uh, golems. You mean, uh, two golems and four P.E.K.K.A.s? Uh, it might have been that way. I might have swapped. Yeah. But that seems like only four, four P.E.K.K.A.s attacking, if that's the case. Seems right. Seems relatively few. Um... That that seems like a lot a lot of sort of distraction. That's like sixty supply dedicated just to soaking up damage. Right. Down from whatever the maximum number of pekas is. That's which is a pretty big change. Yeah, uh, a huge change, but actually uh, a huge advantage because the golems actually split into mini golems when they when they die. So you actually have a little bit of, of extra life on both golems when they die. So that would draw on more fire while while your pekas and wizards and um, your king and queen do do the majority of the damage. That's a good point, and it's probably their most unique uh, factor in terms of actual gameplay. Um, the fact that they split into two smaller ones on death. Do you know if the health for the smaller ones is uh, accounted for in their health that's seen in the Dark Barracks? Uh, yeah, I think their health... I believe that when they split, they're, I think, a quarter health of what they used to be. I could be wrong. Um, I think they're like 12, 50, or... But, but that, and, and that health is like sort of bonus health that's not uh, accounted for in the uh, Dark Barracks because the Dark Barracks, that's only the first primary Correct. units for right. health. Right, so I, off the top of my head, I don't remember what the actual uh, mini golems would be, but it's not accounted for in the actual Dark Barracks. That's straight up the, the one golem. Straight, straight up bonus health. Awesome. That's really neat to see. Uh, I obviously am uh, don't quite have golems yet. I don't even have Valkyries unlocked because uh, I, don't, I don't really spend gems and uh, I have a good time just attacking bases and getting resources and playing the game, uh, playing the resource game and the low trophy game. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that information right there. Yeah, no problem. For the clan castles, we had a couple changes in there as well, sort of switching notes. We had the clan castle itself, which did get a new level, so you have more units in there. We had a clan message for clan leaders. And, of course, the leagues now have a two-week reset, which I think is going to contribute to the donations resetting as well. So, some changes right there. What do you think about all these sort of clan castle clan changes? I think the, the new clan message for the leader uh, helps the leader out uh, with, you know, organizing the clan and also spreading a message. We, when, before, previously, when you're in a clan, the your message inbox is essentially useless. It doesn't really serve any purpose unless, you know, you're not in a clan, but... Um, now that it has a purpose and you have a, you know, a message from, from your leader, you, you pay attention to it um, and you go to it. So it, it's a good way of, uh, to give more power to the leader. 
And it's a good way for uh, players, like for my own leaders in our, our lower level clans, when we don't have the perfect coordination that you guys will have. So we'll, well, we'll if we have someone who's accidentally donating wall breakers repeatedly, we can say, hey, by the way, everyone, don't donate wall breakers. Uh, just stuff like that. It's a great way to communicate, which otherwise it's the, up to the clan leaders to try to track down the person in clan chat. Right. If they ever talk in clan chat. Now you can send a message to everyone just to do a friendly reminder and keep them, uh, keep them heads up. But previously, you would have to kick them in order to send them a message because you'd be able to type in a message when you kick them out of the clan. So I think this is a good change for that as well. Any sort of additional features for managing clans, I certainly support. Yeah, exactly. And I think the league system is, it goes hand in hand too. Just simply having the badge uh, appear when you make your first attack, I think it's, it's cool. So the um, the clan leader can can see whether or not someone's active within a two week span. Although that is still a long, you know, a wide range. Two weeks is a long time, and you only have to attack once. But it's still a cool feature to to be able to know who who's active and who's not. Indeed. So I have not attacked on one of my accounts, so I'm still unranked. Um, so people can see it in my clan. You can also see that on the leaderboards as well. In terms of the two week donations. Um, how do you think that's going to uh, work out in terms of resetting? Do you think that does it matter for high-level clans, or do you guys hop in and out of clans often enough that no one really counts at your donations anyways? Um, it does affect it, actually. One the, one of the biggest changes is you can actually see other clans' donation counts, so that's kind of cool with the update. Um, previously, you wouldn't be able to see other clans' donation counts. Um, that's awesome! I did not know that. Yeah, so you can go to North 44 and, and see you know who's donating, who's not. Um, Jorge, you've only done 90 donations so far this right? week. Right. <laughs> I've been slacking on the donations. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's see your top ones. Um, I see 700, over 1,500 donations. There's your top one for now. Yeah, you have 1,000 and you have 1,500. So, but it still resets if you leave the clan and rejoin, right? Right, it still resets. So it, it's probably 90 as for the last day, probably. <laughs> Nice. So that's interesting right there. Thank you for that piece of information as well. Oh. Um, all right. So I think that's going to wrap it up in terms of the new update stuff. So is there anything else you want to talk about uh, in terms of uh, new update, other changes, recent things? Uh, no, I, I think the update was great. I think the, the new additions are are certainly uh, interesting to play around with. It does it does definitely spice up the game a lot for the for the high level players who are you know previously, especially using drags previously and now having to switch. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, what else they bring to the table for, for Dark Troops in the future. Indeed, uh, I definitely agree with the direction they're going with these Dark Troops. Uh, not only getting more powerful as they unlock more ones, which I expect to continue, but uh, just generally adding more flavor to the game, especially these attacking units, just giving you more options is obviously uh, that's something I approve of. So that was pretty awesome. Do you have any shoutouts or anything you'd like to say before we wrap this up? No, just shout out to North Forty Four as always, and you know, thanks for the support and all the all the new elders that that came from loyalty and uh, progressed through the ranks. And congratulations, you guys! Well, awesome. Thank you very much once again for uh, taking the chance to talk with me and sharing your thoughts with both me and the internet in general. I uh, definitely appreciate the insight into the top level play, and uh, it's certainly very interesting and teaching myself uh, little things I've missed out on in the new update, as well as uh, some peaks to like high-level strategy, which there's no opportunity for me to figure out anywhere else. <laughs> so, if you guys have any comments for Jorge, Jorge, you can perhaps leave them in the comments section, and we will both try to answer them in the comments section of this video. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something as well. And beyond that, guys, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.